So I think what you just went through there is one of the very reasons why there is an acceptance of subpar performance because they're not seeing the contact center in its true light, in its true value. They're looking at it as a cost center, it's strategic importance, it's value to the organization. If they're not making that connection, then it's just a cost center and they're accepting of whatever it takes just to maintain costs. That can include incredible agent turnover rates in the industry. The entire industry has said, it's necessary evil. It's just a part of the game. We got to do that. Really good organizations know how to create the right company culture, the right environment for the agent, growth opportunities for the agent. That's that humanistic approach that you started yeah. out the whole conversation with. Now I see how we're tying it back in. Yep. Yeah. And it all blends together very easily. And I worked for an organization, I won't say who, but we had over at 200% employee churn issue. We were hiring left and right. We have employees actually go through training. Day one, they were gone when they were supposed to be on the floor. And so it's really understanding that. And I think that as leaders, especially contact center leaders, a lot of us are servant by nature. And so they can get awkward going in and promoting these things to the organization saying that, hey, you know what? My agents, my contact center is the face of the business. We are the reason that customers are going to repurchase or renew. And so I think that it takes stepping out of people's comfort zone because you always have to be selling to the executive team. You always have to be presenting the organization as a value add to the customers and the company. I think what happens a lot is that there are executives out there that just don't want to hear it, aren't going to hear it. They grew up and maybe called an old school mentality where the contact center is, it's a cost center. We know it's a necessary evil and we know that it's going to cost us 3% of revenue annually. And so as the contact center leader, I'm holding you responsible for three things. Keep your costs under 3%, SLAs, and CSAT. You know what? That's fine. I can do that. But what about self-service rates? What about other things such as customer effort? What about some of these other things that we actually tied that experience into repeat business? Then we can monetize it. Are our customers telling us within the contact centers new ideas for product? Or it'd be great if we could do this. Are other leaders within the organization taking that information and acting on it? Or is it just saying, whatever, we'll get to it? This is really where, again, I'll pull the humanistic approach in because the humanistic approach builds relationships. And when you build those relationships, you build the trust. You build the trust. And now all of a sudden, when you go into a meeting and have a customer corner where you're giving an example of a great experience and comments from customers and a bad experience, people walk away with that bad experience top of mind and saying, you know what, I know that I'm in product, but what could we have done to make that better? And all of this is what you're talking about is intelligence. And it's all coming from the agents. They're all frontline. I had another, just as you, C-suite individual saying, they're one of our best early warning signals. Absolutely. Right? So how much value is it to the organization that we identify a problem before it sat there for six, seven, eight months, creating issues again and again for the organization because we didn't clearly recognize it or how to fix it? It's not just also like you're saying, renewals, cross-sells, upsells, creating loyalty, net promoter score increases. It's also, on the other side, avoiding disasters that happen all the time. Absolutely it is. In fact, it is important enough for me that I spend an average one to two hours per day talking with agents, talking with team leads, with managers, because they are my early warning. And when I have these conversations with them, it's not, hey, you missed your metric. What are you going to do today to fix it? It's, hey, I noticed that we slipped a little bit. What are you saying? Let's work through this together. It's not the finger pointing. Is, hey, we know we had this challenge, but what can we do? But even beyond that, what can we do today? But if you look at what can happen over the course of the next week, month, whatever, what are you hearing from the customers? What are you hearing as far as an agent? What's hard? Do we need to take a look at the systems that we're utilizing? Maybe you're using four or five different systems that can be consolidated into one to make it more streamlined. And so I think that for me, talking with those agents and understanding what their experience is is just as important as understanding what that customer experience is. You can't have one without the other.